Okay, um, so this video is unfortunately a little incomplete. Um, about halfway through the shoot, my camera got damaged, so I wasn't able to get some clips and photos that I originally wanted, and the video itself isn't as long since I didn't get a touch on everything. Um, that being said, I still threw together what I did have, and it's still a pretty good video, uh, especially if you're into cars, I think you'll really like it, but I just want to let you know before you watch it, in case it seems like things are missing, um, that's why. Um, also on top of that, I shot a lot with the GoPro Max since that was my backup cam for the video, but unfortunately I had the ISO set extremely too high, so a lot of the clips are really noisy and dirty. Um, so yeah, I guess it just was not my day for uh, shooting, but anyways, I hope you still enjoy it. Um, I'll later make a video about what happened to my camera since it's kind of a weird situation there, but anyways, hope you enjoy it. Alright, uh, as you guys know, I am a car guy. Uh, I drove a Fiat Spider in high school, and right now my college car is a Toyota Celica. And uh, what got me into cars and the reason I ended up with a Fiat is because I grew up surrounded by this. It's gonna be a cold video today. <sighs> In classic Greenwald tradition, we can't make this drive without having to haul something, um, this time an old dresser. 36 degrees right now, um, I guarantee it's going to be a lot colder where we're heading though. This is the Greenwald Car Museum. Um, this building here actually used to be a hardware store, but now we own it. Um, we actually have a couple other buildings as well. Right behind here there's a barn, and about a block away there's another garage, all full of cars. Now I'm going to start with this building just because um, most of the cars in here are on the nicer side and most of them also happen to run. Uh, I think my plan is I'm just going to go through these cars one by one, uh, share some details, show some photos, um, and then once we get through here I'll hit the barn next. Um, as you can see, we definitely have a lot to go through here. Um, I'm really hoping I can get through it all without having, you know, a video that's ridiculously long. It's actually worth noting we have a couple cars from the collection that are currently at home. Uh, we have an MGB in the garage, a Porsche 924, and a M3. Alright, the first car here is a Fiat 1200 Cabriolet. Um, as we go through these cars, uh, it's going to be pretty clear I don't know the model year for a lot of them. Um, we have it written down somewhere, but I, we kind of have a lot to keep track of, so I don't have them all quite memorized, but this one here is early 60s, I'm pretty sure. Next, here we got an MG Midget. Uh, this one's late 70s, uh, you can tell because of the rubber bumper that they just slapped on there for safety regulations. Um, this one's in pretty good condition. Uh, a lot of MG midgets, uh, especially from this kind of era, tend to be a little more beat, but this one is pretty nice. I really like the orange with the, with the stripe. Very, very 70s. Next one here is one of my personal favorites. Um, it's a Fiat 128 from the 70s. Uh, now the car isn't anything special by itself, but I really love the work that's been done on it. It's got some sweet stickers, some fog lights, a rack on top. Um, some Aztec seat covers and a Ferrari exhaust. Whew. Freaking love that car, so cool. <laughs> now the only thing I dislike about it is the person before us put in some BMW or Audi seats or something um, and they're too big for the car. Uh, the main thing is, you can see here, the shifter. Um, when you're actually driving and shifting your hand hits up against the seat so Kind of uncomfortable, but uh, you know, other than that, good car. This here is our first Japanese car. Uh, it's a Mazda RX-7 FB. Uh, so we got that rotary engine, very small body. Um, it's in a pretty bad spot, so even after moving it here, uh, I still couldn't get very good shots of it, unfortunately. Um, the interior of this car is pretty crazy. It's like red and brown as you can see. Um, but I have to say, it is a very fun car to drive. Uh, those rotary engines just really 
sound and feel very unique from most other cars. Now, right next to it, we have our third RX-8. Um, uh, RX-8s kind of have a bit of a history in our family. Um, as you can see over there, our second RX-8 is that red one. Uh, what happened to our first RX-8? Um, it was blue. We got it when I was really little, and I grew up riding around in it. And I remember when I was in high school, it was parked on the street, and it got totaled by our neighbor just running straight into it um, with his truck. So pretty traumatizing moment in my life, if I must say. But either way, um, I still love these cars. They're fun to drive, very cool. Um, this one specifically, we actually got for $1,000 because um, the previous guy had flooded the engine, which is super common with rotary engines. Um, so basically it wouldn't run. Uh, my dad got it for a thousand bucks, took it home, got it running in about 30 minutes. It's a very easy fix. And well, now we have a thousand dollar RX-8 that works perfectly. So pretty good deal for any car, um, let alone an RX-8. Here's our first American car for the day, a 1966 Corvair. Um, it's in just about mint condition. Uh, all it really needs is a new clutch. And it's pretty funny because this car is definitely bigger than most of our cars. Um, but it's considered a small economy car by 1960s American standards. The interior on this thing is very nice and also uh, very blue as you can see. Now the story of this car is definitely a strange one. Um, what happened was this old man went to a mattress store, a local one, and he asked the store owner to trade his car for a new mattress and the owner was definitely skeptical and then he went out in the parking lot and saw this and thought he could definitely uh, make a little bit extra profit by selling it. Uh, so he went along with the deal, put it on Craigslist. He knows nothing about cars so it was a pretty good deal from what I remember. I don't remember exactly how much. But yeah, my dad just kind of swooped straight in and got the car. This here is a Lancia. Um, my dad got this while I was away at college, uh, so it's a pretty new car. I can't really tell you anything about it though. Um, I'm guessing it's probably late 70s, but it's a very good looking car, I will say. Now this is one of the more rare cars we have. Um, it's a Fiat Ghia, which again, are extremely rare, especially in the US. Um, I don't really know much else to say about it other than it's from the early 60s. It does have a very nice shape, uh, especially with that sloped back. The interior on this one's just about uh, non-existent. I mean, there's not even glass on the window there. This here is our second American car. Uh, we got it from our uncle, actually. Um, it's a 1986 Corvette. The main problem it has with it is, uh, unfortunately, a sad pop-up headlight. But, uh, you know, that's, that's not too bad. <laughs> now, I really love these 80s interiors, uh, especially this one. Very boxy, very angular, um, and you can't see it, but when the car is on, there's this neon green LCD screen. Whew, very, very cool. One more funny thing about it is uh, <laughs> instead of airbags, I guess, um, the passenger side gets this little cushion. <laughs> I guess if you crash, they just slam their head into that. So, you know, that'll, that'll help you out. This car we also got from the same uncle as the Corvette. Um, it's a 60s Ford Fairlane. Um, this car is massive. This one has also been modified to be like a drag car, I'm pretty sure, because it has the huge tires in the back and the tiny ones up front. Um, and I'm also pretty sure that there's a switch to lock the front wheels so you could do like burnouts. Um, pretty crazy. We got a Datsun 1500 Roadster. Um, this was actually one of my dad's first uh, classic cars and it ran when I was little. He would drive it around, but I don't really know what's wrong with it now. Um, this one I don't know anything about. Um, it is a Datsun, but my dad got it while I was away, so I just never really got any info on it. This one here is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I spent a lot of time driving it back in the day. It's a 1971 Fiat 850 Spider. Um, it's tiny, 
yellow, and convertible. The engine is actually here in the back. Um, it's actually only 850 cc, so super tiny, very underpowered, but ooh, super fun to drive. The interior is really nice. Um, I really love driving these old cars just because um, though it's underpowered, everything just feels so raw and mechanical and just like clicks together. Um, it's just super fun. Also, um, it's really funny too because it's so crammed in here. You can kind of see the pedals are pushed off to the side and the wheel well is right there. So you kind of sit almost sideways with your legs going in inward towards the center. Another RX-8, as uh, mentioned earlier. This is a Lada 1300. Um, it's really boxy, but it's basically your Soviet Union commuter car. Um, it's also the only Russian car that we own. I really like this Fiat 2300. Um, it has a cool shape to it. Uh, it's pretty big for a Fiat, but uh, doesn't run, unfortunately. All right, this one is also another very rare and interesting car. Um, it's an Otis Lombardi. Um, it's actually heavily based on the Fiat 850 that I showed you earlier, um, but this one's been tuned up by a Barth. So it's essentially a like race car version of the Fiat. Uh, you can see working in there is definitely a pain. The interior is also more of like a cockpit. Um, I really love the like lines, it gives it kind of a more like airplane look. Um, and you can see it's, it's extremely low, so you can see the dash, there's like no room. Uh, so they had to put the gauges off to the side in the center. Um, really, really cool. It feels really unique to sit in. Next is a Maserati by Turbo. Um, I know nothing about this. The interior is kind of cool though. This is an MGB, uh, I believe 1979 if I'm correct. These are very common as far as old cars go. Um, they're very classic to drive, they feel really, you know, raw. Um, they're kind of quirky too. The interior is pretty neat, I mean it, it really just looks like um, a car that you'd see in an old adventure film, I guess. Um, you can also kind of see the headroom is very low, uh, not too much space, and one more weird thing is uh, it actually has three windshield wipers, so <laughs> kind of strange. Now here is my all-time favorite, my very own 1979 Fiat Spider. I love this car. Um, I won't go into too much detail just because I plan on making its own full video one of these days. Whew, I swear, every time, every time I just sit in this car, ugh, just feels right. I just feel like I am at home. Like, ah, seat molds perfectly to me, steering wheel feels perfect in my hand, got the shifter, very, very, uh, it's a long shifter, very close to the wheel, quick to switch to. And then uh, my favorite part is uh, the door is very short, so it's just the perfect height for putting your arm out the window. Ooh, that feels great. This car's just simply perfect. I, <laughs> I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, you can see the uh, back bench there, which is meant for like luggage and storage, but I'd often have to put friends back there with absolutely no leg room, but uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Being in college and having no money or a garage, um, this car is just sitting in storage here until um, you know I graduate. Oh, also, uh, for two summers, I delivered pizzas in this thing, which was amazing. It's also worth noting we have primarily Fiat Spiders in this collection, uh, just because they're super common and fairly cheap. Not quite the same, but we also have a Fiat 500. Okay, it is so freaking cold today. Uh, of course, we had to come on like the coldest day with freezing weather. Uh, right now, I'm actually just chilling in the bathroom warming up, because this is the only room with a heater. <laughs> so, you know, taking a little break here. That just about covers everything in the main building, so we're finally now on to the barn. Alright, well. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so cold it was frozen shut. <laughs> Now, though a lot more messy, the barn is way more interesting to take photos in. That being said, um, most of the cars here don't run, need new paint, or are completely torn apart. Oh, um, and also they're all very dusty. We have some pretty interesting stuff in here, uh, like a right-hand drive Isuzu, two Opals, Jaguar X12s, uh, Datsun 280Z, and a few Porsches as well as some other random cars. Um, but unfortunately, I don't get to all of them today uh, because of the camera. One of the more notable cars we have in here is this Ford Mustang Mach 1. Um, it actually runs perfectly fine. It just needs some new paint. I've actually spent uh, most of my weekends working here. Uh, my dad's uh, thankfully been paying me. Um, most recently, I actually hung up all this insulation and these metal sheets that we had lying around. It's kind of funny because I think in all my years I've spent more time working on these buildings than the actual cars themselves. One strange car we have is this Fiat 128. So the car is like this green and the seats are zebra print. Um, but even stranger are the side panels have this safari animal like pattern on them. So I don't know, it's, it's this weird like safari Fiat limited edition. I'm not really sure, but kind of funky. The last car I'm going to mention um, is our 1969 Fiat Dino. Um, these cars, their bodies are made by Fiat, but the engine is actually a Ferrari Dino engine. Um, unfortunately, this one is in terrible condition, though. So yeah, that's a peek at the collection. Um, again, I didn't get a cover as much as I wanted. I barely touched on the barn and didn't even get to the other building, but I really want to make a full high production video series where I go through each car and talk about them as well as do a test drive. So if you enjoyed this, uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, probably when the weather gets a bit nicer. Um, anyways, hope you enjoyed what I could put together today. Um, thanks for watching.